before we move on to the alternatives, which is the next section of this web webinar, I just wanted to briefly talk you through the, hy that's right, the hybrid model um, for the development of the guidance that's set out in part one of the consultation paper. Um, this model proposes the use of existing international frameworks with support from national uh, frameworks. Uh, and in this model, IFRS for SMEs is proposed to be the foundational international framework. And this is because IFRS for SMEs is a single standalone set of guidance that is periodically rather than continuously updated uh, and so could provide a stable base uh, for the guidance. Um, it's also intended for many different sectors as well and so it has um, a broader base. But as we know, IFRS for SMEs, with its focus on private sector transactions, doesn't address all MPO specific issues. So we're proposing that the full IFRS suite of standards and the full IPSAS suite, IPSAS suite of standards and their conceptual frameworks would also be used where IFRS for SMEs doesn't address uh, an issue that's specific to nonprofit organisations. We're also proposing that the model draws on jurisdictional level guidance to help develop this MPO specific reporting solutions um, that, that would also include disclosures. Um, a number of countries have MPO specific guidance that have well thought through approaches to um, transactions that are specific to nonprofit organizations. But depending on the country context, this can lead to differing solution meaning that there is no single national based solution. Um, it, it differs depending on which country you're in. So adopting this combined approach will mean that we can access the most appropriate elements of existing guidance without starting completely from scratch. Uh, and the alternatives that we're about to um, discuss have utilised this model to varying degrees. Um, but are not a slave to it because obviously at this point we're consulting um, on this model as part of the overall consultation. Uh, and if you have any thoughts on this, there's still an opportunity uh, for you to contribute um, as the um, consultation on part one um, closes uh, this Friday, the 30th of July. So there's still time to uh, put something in if you've got a view on, on this model that exists. Um, so currently, uh, international guidance doesn't explicitly deal with grant expenses. Uh, current guidance rests under the provisions for the recognition of provisions and reporting of contingent liabilities within IFRS, IFRS for SMEs and IPSAS. Um, the relevant standards are IIS 37, Provisions, Contingent Liabilities and Contingent Assets. Uh, section 21 of the IFRS for SMEs standards on provisions and contingencies and IPSAS 19 on provisions, contingent liabilities and assets. Under these standards, a grant expense and a liability is recognised when an MPO has a present obligation to fund another entity created by a past event and the amount of the grant can be reliably measured. The past event could be uh, a legal or constructive obligation, but it is something that effectively binds an organisation. The recognition of the grant would take place when an MPO has no realistic alternative other than to settle an obligation to pay the grant. And therefore, it's probable that there will be an outflow of resources. So when an expense is recognised, it follows the relevant standards requirements for presentation, measurement and disclosure of the expense uh, and cross reference needs to be made to, the, made to the nature and function of expenses uh, analysis that I mentioned earlier is subject to a separate webinar. Um, the timing of the recognition of a grant would depend on any conditions included in the grant. Include, um, that is when the conditions are such that there would be no realistic alternative to settling the obligation to pay the grant. So if there are no conditions and an obligation has been created, then the grant would need to be recognised as, as an expense in the reporting period when the obligation was created. Uh, and the standards also provide for the time value of money um, and recognising that if that is significant, um, so that it's recognised at present value. 
As the current guidance does not explicitly address grant expenses, the existing standards do not provide specific guidance to cover perform obligations imposed by a grantor, nor does the guidance address the obligation made by the grantor when agreeing to pay or make a grant. Um, as uh, David just mentioned, IBSASB has got a current project on transfer expenses, which explicitly provides grant uh, guidance for grant expense transactions. Um, ED72 addresses recognition and measurement of performance obligations, distinguishing between where there are the, tr the transfer recipient is required to, to satisfy performance obligations by transferring goods or services to the third party beneficiary and where the transfer recipient is not required to satisfy performance obligations. ED72 also provides guidance which would address the accounting for multi-year grants. Um, a number of um, jurisdictions follow international standards, uh, and this can be variably IFRS, IFRS for SNEES, or IPSUS. Um, they adopt the provisions following the uh, accounting treatments for the recognition of grants, as I've just discussed. Um, other jurisdictions are based on the same or similar provisions and provide additional guidance. Um, one set of national guidance takes the general approach to the recognition of liabilities um, for grantors, but also explicitly includes the concept of performance obligations. Uh, and additional guidance is provided in some uh, national um, uh, sets of guidance that specifically covers grant expenses, performance related conditions, and what constitutes an obligation from which an MPO cannot realistically withdraw whether it's conditional or unconditional. So largely international standards and national standards require an entity to recognize a liability and an expense when a grantor is committed to providing resources to a grant recipient. Some jurisdictions include provisions that explicitly refer to performance obligations or where the grant is conditional or has conditions that need to be met. So additional guidance there. Um, with significant commonality um, across these two standards, we're only proposing two alternatives. So alternative one is based on either, either of the, the frameworks, either IFRS um, core standards, IFRS for SMEs or IPSUS. Uh, and any of those frameworks would be supported by additional guidance to assist nonprofit organizations with their specific issues. So this guidance would cover recognition, measurement and disclosure, including performance related conditions. And in terms of disclosures, it would include recommended additional disclosures. Uh, and this would include uh, recognizing a liability and expense for a, a grant when an obligation has been created. Um, providing additional guidance on performance related conditions, uh, providing additional guidance on multi-year grants, uh, and providing guidance on disclosure of grants and related commitments. Um, but under this option, there would be no additional disclosures mandated. Um, and as, as stated, the guidance could be prepared to align with any one of the international frameworks, but in line with the proposal in part one of the consultation paper for IFRS for SNEES to be the foundational framework, that would be the preference. Um, alternative two builds on alternative one with additional guidance on recognition um, measurement, um, but, but requires that performance um, obligation approaches in ED72 on transfers expenses are incorporated into the guidance uh, where IPSIS isn't being used as the base. Um, incorporating these principles would provide additional guidance on grants with performance obligations and multi-year arrangements. Um, under this approach, uh, MPOs similarly would recognise a liability and an expense for the grant when the obligation has been created, uh, be provided with additional guidance on performance related um, conditions and multi-year grants, uh, and also on the disclosure of grants related commit, um, commitments. Um, it would also include that if awarding uh, uh, grants, um, that if the grantor is awarding grants, that it would be required to disclose significant transactions such that all users 
can understand the transactions and the commitments that have been made by the grantor. So the key difference with alternative two is that there is a mandatory, there are mandatory disclosure requirements and additional guidance that follows the proposals in ED 72. Um, to help in understanding the implications of the alternatives, uh, the consultation paper looks at the relative advantages and disadvantages through four perspectives, technical, practical, stakeholder and cost benefit. Um, these are not exhaustive, but are intended to try and help um, uh, bring the alternatives to life. So in looking at the relative advantages of alternatives relating to grant expenses, from a technical perspective, alternative one follows the international standards. Practically, it will provide uh, additional guidance, which will help NPOs decide when they have an obligation to pay a grant and also when to recognize multi-year schemes. Alternative two would follow IPSUS, which uh, could, could assist uh, in recognition decisions. And from a practical perspective, the, this additional guidance may assist in recognizing multi-year schemes. Also from a stakeholder perspective, it may increase comparability of grant reporting across MPOs. Um, in looking at the relative disadvantages, alternative one may mean from a stakeholder perspective, um, there is less comparability across MPOs due to different interpretations of whichever standard is followed. Uh, and for alternative two, from a technical perspective, following IPSUS um, may create departures from IFRS and IFRS for SMEs um, for complex arrangements with multiple performance um, obligations, but probably not for more simple arrangements. So alternative two offers potentially greater comparability of MPO information, but with, um, but, but with greater departures from IFRS uh, and IFRS for SMEs for complex arrangements with performance obligations. Uh, and that's a trade-off um, that will need to be considered as we look at the responses that come from the consultation paper. Um, the consultation um, paper asks um, four questions. Um, and these questions go to, um, uh, have we got the description of the uh, issue um, right? and to try and gather thoughts about the alternatives. Um, these four questions are standard to all of the topics and are intended to capture feedback that will help us progress each issue as we start to develop draft guidance. Um, so we want your views um, on this uh, and any other issues that have come up, including um, what might add um, most value and any practical um, considerations. Um, so um, now that um, I've taken you um, through these these topics, um, um, I'm hoping and we hope that, that you feel ready to respond um, to them in the consultation. Um, and uh, so um, we, you know, we, we are really grateful to kind of get the input that you've had um, today uh, and we hope that um, this has been helpful to, to you because it has been really helpful to us to get your inputs, comments and, and questions. Um, we're hoping that the discussion has helped clarify some of the proposals and your view on them. Um, so the important next step we'd like to encourage is for you to go ahead and submit your own formal responses, either as an individual or as an organisation. Uh, and as it says up on the screen there, there are a reminder that the closing date for these topics is the 24th of September. Um, but you might find it easier to respond to the questions whilst today's webinar is fresh in your mind. Um, you can build up your feedback um, or, uh, as we go through um, webinars or as you um, work through um, the, the various topic materials, or you can just respond to today's topic if that's your prime area of interest. Um, all of the information is on the IFR for mpo.org website. Uh, including information about uh, a couple more webinars that are coming up over the next few weeks. So um, in terms of responding to the consultation um, paper, we've tried to make it as easy as possible. And there are three different ways you can share your views. Uh, as I said, all that information is on the website. Um, if your organisation already has a process for submitting comments on accounting standards, then you can submit a comment letter as you might usually do and upload it to our website. 
If you'd like to submit a response as an organization or collaborate with others or just simply work offline, uh, then the second option is to download um, a Word template that we've created and is available on the IFR for MPO website. You can download it, uh, work on it over time and then upload it to the website when you're done. Um, the third option is great if you're submitting uh, as an individual uh, and that's an online survey. Um, you, you, you can need to put in some personal information, but once you've done that and have saved it, uh, you can come back to the survey as many times as you want um, before you're ready to submit it. So you don't have to do it all in one go. Uh, so we really hope that you feel motivated and, and confident to submit a response, even if you've not done something like this before. Um, a large number of responses from all regions of the world will really help add quality and credibility to the guidance uh, we produce. Uh, and we say this many times, we want to hear from uh, those that have already got um, uh, guidance through national standards and those that don't. We want to hear about what works well as well as what doesn't work well as part of this, because that will really help us um, as, as we move forward. Um, so just before we get to, to close, um, I kind of like to sort of focus on some positives because we've heard a lot about issues and challenges uh, in the webinar today. Um, but we're interested in terms of what your hope is for the future. Um, the guidance offers the opportunity for a way forward, uh, an opportunity to address the issues and challenges we've talked about. So we'd, we'd like you to take um, part in a, in a mentee um, poll uh, to, to share your thoughts on this. Um, so if you've got a device, whether that be a phone, tablet, lab, laptop or whatever you have um, available and can open a, a window in that uh, and go to www menti.com um, and access um, that. Um, when If you go into that, it will ask you for a code. Um, the code is on the screen, 82760921. Um, we'd be interested to kind of hear your thoughts um, on that. You don't have to leave this meeting to be able to, to do that. Uh, and we've put up in front of you uh, a word cloud um, that word cloud includes um, the words that came up in the webinar that we ran earlier um, today. Um, but we'd really like to get your thoughts um, too. Um, so we want to capture the positive, the hopes for the future um, that, that we can um, build on going forward. Uh, accountability is the strongest word uh, in the word cloud at the moment. Um, that's just got larger, um, so that's really interesting, um, but also a lot of support for uni uniformity, clarity and consistency. Um, I see acceptability by granters um, in there. I think that's a really um, Im important uh, point uh, and great to have that out, out as, a, as a hope. I can assure you we're working very hard um, on that. If anyone else has got anything else they want to add, any, any additional words that want to go into the word cloud, um, we will keep this open um, for a while. So um, please do feel free, even if we've taken it off the screen, to add your words so that we can capture um, those hopes, um, uh, which really help us. Um, yeah, so accountability, uniformity, sorry, uniformity. Uh, out there, um, it's good to see accountability up there, transparency, consistency, simplicity. Okay, so some some important words there. Okay, um, if anyone else got any else, please do um, continue to, to share them. I'm just going to take that away and just reshare um, my screen just to kind of close out um, our webinar uh, today. Um, and sorry, let's go back. Um, have, so I just wanted to let you know kind of what happens uh, next. Um, I can go back to that. Um, so you, you might be wondering what happens, uh, where are we in the process, what happens to your responses? 
um, as shown here, we're, we're in the outreach uh, section um, of the consultation paper at the moment. Uh, and starting in quarter three, we will start to analyze the responses that come in um, from, from that. Um, the forward, uh, and it is those responses that are gonna shape the draft guidance that we then develop. Um, our forward timetable is going to depend very much on the quantity and nature of responses that we get, um, but we will absolutely be developing the draft um, guidance in, in 2022, uh, and we look forward to kind of continuing outreach and engagement with you and uh, other interest groups so that we can get continue to get input um, as, as we go forward. And finally, um, so how can you stay connected and engaged uh, whilst we're doing all of that hard work, uh, looking at your responses? I uh, would encourage you to subscribe to our quarterly newsletter if you haven't done so already. Uh, that will keep you up to date and also ensure that you're aware of any um, relevant events that are happening in your region. Um, we'll put a link to that um, in the chat. We'd also encourage you to follow us on social media, specifically LinkedIn and Twitter, if you're active there. Um, if you can like, um, comment or share our posts, they get seen by even more people uh, and that creates the opportunity for even more voices to be heard. Um, Nonprofit organisations are incredibly diverse across the globe and it's really hard to, to get to everybody uh, because of that diversity and you can really help uh, with our mission to try and get to as many people as possible. Um, you can always email the project um, or myself um, uh, and, and, and Sam uh, as well uh, has been uh, part of uh, the event today uh, and those email addresses will be made available to you. Uh, we, will be we will be sending a follow-up email with, the, with this PowerPoint presentation um, and the recordings uh, and those will also be available on the website. Um, so we'll put all that information together so that you've got them all in one place if you're not able to pick them up from the chat. Uh, also, just a bit of a plug, if you have got colleagues um, in your organisations or in your networks uh, who you think would be interested in um, similar events, um, please um, encourage them to uh, check out the page on the website um, to see if there are things that they might be interested in. So I'd like to thank you again uh, for your time, effort, um, insights, the useful information that you've shared with us um, today. Uh, we really do appreciate it and look forward to engaging you as we continue on this journey uh, to develop the world's first internationally applicable financial reporting guidance for nonprofit organizations. Um, I don't know if Sam, you have a final word that you